I'm not sure if you can remember me. Um, this is Julian from Cape Town. Um, I interviewed you once or twice at the EFC, and um, you spoke about, you were very vocal about um, fighters' rights and fighters being treated fair. I'm not sure if you can recall, I, I won't blame you if you don't understand, or don't recall at least. Um, just tell me the, the step up in from a smaller promotion to the UFC in, in terms of how much the UFC values fighters and, and just the treatment you've been receiving since you stepped up from the Dana White series and where you are right now. The step up for me, it, for me, it's really no step up. I have so many fights that, for me, I've always believed I could be at this level, and now that I am at this level, I'm not even celebrating. I just need to keep continue to prove myself and prove my worth and prove why I feel I belong with the highest level. No, so, uh, what I meant was in terms of the treatment you're getting uh, from the promotion, and in terms of the, uh -huh. the, the promotion looking after you, you know. Oh, the, the treatment is wonderful. Like, when I came here, I landed here in Vegas on Tuesday, and, you know, from the Contender Series, being in the same hotel with the same workers to now being in the UFC at the same hotel and the same workers, the treatment us fighters get here, it's been unbelievable. It's been mind-blowing. Like, I almost feel like I just don't even deserve it yet. Like, that's how <laughs> they are to us. I mean, my husband and I, we just sat down last night, and we just feel super blessed to be alongside mm. these fighters. Yeah, and, and I obviously know personally of JP's his journey also and your journey from South Africa and also just credit to you guys also as a as a as a couple what you've been through. I mean I've I've watched your journey and JP, like I said, from his wrestling days when you were still a kid and to where you guys were from the EFC and you moved to the USA and it's it's already tough as for fighters to find their feet and to get the opportunity to fight in an organization like the UFC, but for JP to leave the country also his homeland. Um, what are the challenges for you as a couple? I mean, a married couple, you are making history also. And, and what's the excitement that comes along with it, just the way you are right now? Well, when we left South Africa, we left October 1st, 2019. Now here we are, we're making our debuts together March 20. In that time frame, I cannot lie, it, it's super tough for us. Like, we luckily were able to get out of the country before the pandemic. Mm. Here, but since we left, it everything's been life changing. Like we basically had to start back from ground zero. We came with little money, and we just had to restart our lives together. We were fortunate enough to fight together for LFA and fight for their contender, and both earned contracts. So, so we're just now getting on our feet. It's mm -hmm. been amazing to be able to go alongside with on this journey together. Like when. In South Africa, we were at our highest high together. He was doing wonderful there. He took care of us. Now, when we left South Africa and came together here, both hit rock bottom. We both were at our lowest lows. Our love for each other is just growing every day, and being able to do this together again has been nothing. And, and yeah, I wouldn't keep you long, Zondra uh, from South Africa. All the best, and we are rooting for you and JP all the way. God bless you. Eh? Thank you so much. Cool. We'll take our next questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Cheyenne, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can. Awesome. Uh, Cheyenne, a lot of people loved the scrum yesterday, myself included. I wanted to ask, how did you first meet JP? Oh, it's it's quite a story. <laughs> Actually, um, I used to live here in Las Vegas, um, and my head coach was Dennis Davis out at King Kapoor here. And my head coach actually traveled to Cape Town one day to go corner a teammate of mine. They actually, JP and head coach back then, ran into each other. They knew each other. And JP was questioning him. He was like, I know you have a lot of females uh, over at Extreme Couture. He was like, who's the nicest girl? And <laughs> my coach was like, I think you would really like this girl, Cheyenne. And crazy enough, he was actually already trying to message me on Instagram. And I, I was kind of a brat. I ignored him a lot for many months, actually. When my coach told him about me then, then he was messaging me even more, my, writing me all these nice things. And... One day I was just like, oh man, this guy's very persistent. I was like, let me just write him back and I'll give him some attention. And the day I started writing him back, he was like, you're the most beautiful woman in the world. I'm going to marry you. You don't know it yet. And I was just like, 
you're right. I don't know it yet. Like, this guy's crazy. I was like, he's just telling me everything I want to hear. But he was actually scheduled to fight, and we were just messaging. We talked every day, and he was like, hey, my fight fell through. I'm going to come see you in America. What? I was like, no way. Little did I know, that man showed up at my doorstep, flew all the way from South Africa, showed up at my doorstep, and he was like, listen, I am not here to make you my girlfriend. I'm here because you are my girlfriend. So he kind of gave me no choice, but, I mean, I fell in love with him since then. The day we met each other, we have not left each other's side. He stayed in Vegas for a month, and I went back to South Africa with him, not to move. I just went there to go train with his team, just be with him and get to know him more. And then while we were there, I, I realized that I love this guy. I was like, this is my best friend. Where do we go from here? I'm all the way in Vegas. You're all the way in South Africa. How do we make it work? It, it just didn't seem real. He was like, listen, I'll take care of you here. He did. He went to Vegas. I packed up all my stuff. I traveled to South Africa and started a life with him. And we've been inseparable since the moment. Well, for one, that's very beautiful. Two, I think your coach <laughs> deserves some credit. That's the real MVP right there for JP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know your dad will be in the corner real quick. Did JP win him over quickly or did it take a minute? Actually, so my dad's never liked any guy that I've ever liked, first of all. So when I told him about JP, obviously it's like a tricky situation when you're talking to someone online. But when I told my dad about him at first, my dad actually knew of him. My dad is the biggest MMA fan I know. And when I told him his name, he was like, oh, that's the guy that suplexed the guy on Contender Series. And I was like, yeah, that's him. And so my dad knew of him. Um, I introduced him to my family when he was here. And immediately my family just felt this vibe that, you know, who, who as a man at the time, 22 years old, just gets up, travels on a flight, doesn't, I mean, he doesn't know, I mean, he knew I was real, but just traveled and, came to me and he was like, listen, you're my girlfriend. Like, I'm not leaving here without you. <laughs> I think my parents kind of realized that he was young, but he was a man of his word. And they knew of him and his, his training gym over in South Africa. And when I told my family I wanted to go there, they were very supportive of it, shockingly, which I did not think my dad would be because I'm a daddy's girl. But my parents, since day one, have been very supportive. And my dad loves him. My dad considers him just as close as so it's been very nice to have a have my family love him just as much. My final question, you, once again, he's going to be in the corner, and you told the story how you told your dad you want to be the female karate kid. So how important will his voice be in the corner along with JP and your coach? I told my dad not to speak in the corner. My dad is there specifically just to watch a show. I mean, my dad, I mean, he has worked relentlessly towards helping me make my dreams come true. And the fact that there's no crowd, there was no way that we could not let my dad miss this for anything. I mean, my dad has done everything in his power to help me since a baby to stay in karate, stay in Taekwondo when I made that transfer. And then when I made the transfer to MMA. He's been my number one fan. Ever since I started fighting, he used to study every single girl. And it, it, it's just unbelievable the support from my dad and there's no way that I don't I so he's just there for the show <laughs> well I hope he enjoys it Cheyenne thank you for the time and good luck thank you so much guys we'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com your line is open hey Cheyenne uh, I know a lot of questions about you and JP fighting on the same show so I apologize for more of those but uh, but you know a lot of fighters talk about when they have teammates on the same card you know having someone around that understands what it's like to go through weight cutting and fight preparation it's just nice to have that kind of person around uh, what's it like with, with a husband and wife because I imagine that's a that brings a whole other kind of dynamic to this week oh it's husband wife and a teammate on this card of ours so uh, it's been awesome. Like, we, we personally love it. Whenever JP fights, I'm cutting weight with him. Whenever I fight, he's cutting weight with me. So the fact that we just get to go and do this together, cut weight together, it it's nice because it's paychecks one night, and we're both doing it together. That's the way I look at it as. If one fights, I fight. If he fights, it is, this is our job. This is what we do. Again, we're best friends. So in the house, if one's dieting for a fight, the other person's dieting. 
like we really respect each other at this level and it it's just been so fun to experience experience this together the same nights and this whole week has been nothing but good vibes we have our teammate Macy also fighting on this card it it's just been nothing but happy happiness here all week for us even leading into the fight you know obviously the tension um, grumpiness is always going to be there some days but then every night when we go to bed we just speak about we have an opportunity and start our legacy and for that reason we're bringing everything in for it, obviously, it seems like you've uh, you got a very positive, upbeat experience with this, and I know I'm sure you've heard stories or had questions about the pressure that comes along with this, though, with both of you fighting on one card. Uh, I know Anthony Pettis has said in the past, you know, after he fought on the same card as his brother Sergio, he really didn't want to do that again because it's just so much, you know, so much emotion involved with watching, you know, someone you love fight, and then you got to go out and do it again. And obviously, that's how this is going to work with JP fighting early in the night and you on the main card. Uh, have you wrapped your head around that? I mean, it seems like you're really upbeat about it, but I know there is a certain level of pressure that comes along with that. Of course, there is a little bit of pressure, but at the same time, this is going to be my 25th cage fight. It, I got to be able to control my emotions. Um, I don't really see what kind of the big deal is, but I guess that's me. Everyone is different. I respect what Anthony says about his brother. Like, that's his family. Like, but my husband, I've watched him prepare. I Whatever happens is in God's hands. There's nothing I can do. I trust my husband's capability to go out there and get his get the job done for us and trust my capability to go out there and get the job done. So for me, it's just going out there and showing the support as a wife. I'm going to make that walk with him. Damn straight, I'm going to make that walk with him, actually. Like, I'm going to be right there by his side just like he's going to be. And with that being said, you know, coming off the Contender Series, you know, Contender Series fighters do end up getting – you know, a lot of attention coming into the UFC because you do kind of get a, a little bit of a bigger platform to come into the UFC because a lot of people watch the Contender Series. It's a more intimate show with only five fights on one card, that kind of thing. Uh, but we have seen, you know, the pre you know, we have seen some Contender Series fighters go on and have great things. Obviously, your teammate Jeff Neal, you know, great performances, top 10 fighter, top 15 fighter. We have some others we've seen, you know, kind of fall short. So how do you deal with that part of it, coming in with the expectation, you know, coming out to Contender Series? And, and obviously, I'm sure you want to make a big debut. I don't really see any expectations. I feel like my Contender Series showed who exactly who I was. And I feel all my fights show exactly who I am. Every time I step into that cage, I'm going to just go out there and stay true to myself, and I'm going to show you guys what I know about myself. And that's what I love about fighting is it's a mental warfare in there. I, I mean, we're all skilled. Once you're at this highest level, even at Contender Series, that's a high level to get to there. Everyone's good. But when you get in there, it's a 50-50 chance. But if you have any self-doubt in yourself, it's going to show. So whenever I step into that cage, I have 100% confidence, and I'm going to just show you guys who I am and what I am. And last one for me, uh, obviously you and JP are looking to make history uh, as the first husband and wife to win both of your fights on a UFC card. So can you give me a prediction for his fight and then for your fight? I don't really like to make predictions because I'm not no Conor McGregor. <laughs> he, he can make the predictions. Me, I just go out there and whatever happens, happens. Obviously, we won't want the finish. I can see my husband definitely submitting his guy or TKing his guy for sure. Me, I can see anyone. I'm not going to make a prediction because whatever is presented in that in that moment, I'm going to take. Thanks very much. Thank you, guys. We'll take our next questions from Omer Mert with Esport. Your line is open. Hello, Shane. Hello, Shane. How are you? Good. How are you? Thank you. You came to UFC and all these media and other stuff. How does it make you feel? It makes me feel good. It definitely makes me feel good. I've been in this sport a very long time, and I've always known I can get to this level. And now that I am here at this level and with the UFC, it, it's just very bittersweet for me. It makes me almost like want to cry. <laughs> okay. We know the biggest goal always the title, but what do you want to achieve first in the UFC? I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, we know biggest goal always the title, but... What do you want to achieve first in the UFC? I want to achieve my first win in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my yeah. English. 
it's okay. I just want to achieve going out there, winning myself, uh, winning by a finish in my debut. That's my first goal. And then from there, I'll evaluate my next goal. I go by little goals. Obviously, the goal is to get to that belt, but I need to take baby steps to get there. Okay, my last question. If you win this match, who do you want from the UFC in your second fight? Whoever is they are. Is there a specific me. name? Or... No, I mean, there's, there's quite a few girls in this division. They're all killers. They're all good. I'm just going to take whoever they give me.